A pair of astronauts stranded on the International Space Station are one step closer to returning home to Earth. They became stuck after the spacecraft they traveled on suffered propulsion issues and returned home without them. But a replacement crew have now docked with the orbital outpost. The SpaceX Dragon capsule high above Earth, the Indian Ocean directly below. It's en route to the International Space Station. On board the capsule, a replacement crew of astronauts that will allow Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, both stuck on board the ISS since the middle of last year, to go home. An important step in their return to Earth, a successful docking of the Dragon capsule. 29 hours since launching from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the craft reached its destination. Just a short while later, the recent arrivals from Earth were welcomed by the ISS crew and began settling into what will be their home for roughly six months. Speaking with NASA's Mission Control Center, Suni Williams, who will return home after her unexpectedly longer stay in space, expressed her gratitude. And Houston, thank you for uh, tuning in this early morning. It was a, a wonderful day. Great to see our friends arrive. So thank you so much. The stranded pair of astronauts on the ISS are expected to depart for home in the coming days, along with an American astronaut and a Russian cosmonaut. I can speak now to journalist and author David Ariosto. In his latest book, Open Space, he discusses the science and technology behind the power competition in space. David, as a space enthusiast yourself, I suppose you watched the docking. Were you excited? Oh, it's always interesting to, to see these things actually up close and in action. And, and you know, the live feed is something that is, is, you know, relatively new in terms of like this whole paradigm shift that we've seen in commercial space. Um, SpaceX is the only game in town at this point. Boeing was supposed to sort of change that math and kind of provide a degree of diversity to, uh, to, to the landscape. NASA just doesn't want to have to rely on just one company. And yet the math has changed a little bit now with Elon Musk in the White House and just the sheer overall dominance SpaceX mm -hmm. has shown. But, you know, Starling, uh, Starliner with the, those helium problems in terms of its thrusters and just like the bevy of problems that they faced even before launch, it, it, it showcases that, you know, SpaceX, the, the primacy of this company is, is something that just can't be ignored. But, but watching it, uh, yeah, it's it's it's. It's hard not to get excited about just the marvel of engineering that, that you get to see unfold in real time with these feeds. Well, tell us a little bit more about the company because I believe Boeing Starliner capsule had quite a few problems. NASA had to rely on a SpaceX lift. Is SpaceX the only viable option left now? You know, after, um, after the Columbia disaster in 2003, there was this sort of steady degrade or, 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 you know, the slow retirement of the shuttle program. And, and after that, after that, uh, that vehicle retired, there was this huge reliance on Russian Soyuz vehicles to get into orbit. And obviously, the geopolitical situation has changed. And so the emphasis was to look toward the commercial sector. You know, this, this you sort of see dribs and drabs of this during the second Bush administration, obviously, with the cancel, cancellation of constellation under the Obama administration, you know, the push toward private was, was much more front and center. Mm -hmm. But the hope was always having multiple options, at very least, just to keep costs down. But at this point, uh, SpaceX is the only game in town. And, and not only that, but, you know, as we start to, to look at the Artemis program, the primacy of the moon, the emphasis that, that Elon Musk has put on Mars, uh, in, you know, Starship, at, and we've seen sort of the iterative testing uh, of that vehicle. Um, it's hard not to see SpaceX a little bit in the driver's seat. And I even get into constellation, or excuse me, the um, Starlink constellation, which is by far the, the largest constellation uh, in, in the global market right now. So, it, you know, it's it just an, it's an interesting time now in, in space, in the commercial sure era. Uh, we've kind of reached this maturation process uh, stage that uh, is, is right there for everybody to see with regard to Starliner and now Dragon. And, and as you point out, um NASA's also being affected by the Trump administration's push to slash government spending. You know, this is this is something that in, in my conversations with folks inside NASA, they're sort of waiting to see. Um, you know, we, we've seen layoffs already. 
Um, but we've seen layoffs in other uh, agencies as well, only to see higher backs. So, you know, the question mark I think people are, are sort of wondering is, is will NASA start to focus more on human spaceflight, which seems to, to jive a bit more closely with what Elon Musk has been describing, to the detriment of some of the science programs that uh, that, that NASA has been a hallmark of NASA's efforts. I mean, I, I think anybody who looks at the James Webb telescope and the imagery that comes out of those can't help but be just marvel at those mm. the, those images and sort of this our, our place in the universe. Um, and there's a knock on effect to that in terms of, you know, those who get interested in STEM and, and you know, sort of the, the broader wonderment, you know, it, it's hard to quantify those things. Mm. But in the context of where you might be looking to cut and what the, the initial mission of NASA was back in the 1960s mm -hmm. was a space race uh, against the Soviet Union. Exactly. We might be back in a, in a similar kind of mindset with regard to not only the push towards the moon, Mars, all these new commercial space stations, but also the rivalry with China, which has created a new sort of a geopolitical impetus for all of this. David Ariosto, thank you very much for your insights.